This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Since the EU parliamentary elections earlier this month, most of the European media's attention has understandably been focused on France, where after his centrist coalition was soundly beaten by Marine Le Pen's national rally, Macron essentially dared the French electorate to replicate the results at a parliamentary election. But somewhat fortunately for German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Macron's headline-grabbing antics have distracted from arguably as dramatic a result in Germany, where the SPD were beaten by both the Christian Democrats and the AFD, and the governing coalition won less than a third of the popular vote. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at why these elections were such a disaster for Schultz and Co, explain why the governing coalition is so unpopular, and ask whether it could actually collapse in the coming weeks. Before we get into it, we recently announced that we're launching a physical newspaper that will feature major articles on things like the rise of the AFD and the European election. So if you want to support our journalism, then consider learning more or buying a copy by clicking the link in the description. So let's start by explaining quite how bad the EU elections were for Germany's governing coalition. As we just mentioned, Chancellor Olaf Scholz SPD came third, behind both the Christian Democrats and, astonishingly, the far-right AFD, despite a series of AFD-related scandals in the run-up to the election. Now, these mainly related to their lead candidate, Maximilian Kra, who told an Italian newspaper that members of the Nazi SS were not necessarily criminals, and whose assistant was arrested on suspicion of spying for China only a few months before the vote. Anyway, the SPD won just 14% of the vote, roughly two points behind the AFD, which means that they lost two seats compared to 2019. Now, this might not sound too bad, but it's worth pointing out that 2019 was already considered a terrible year for the SPD. At the time, they were part of Merkel's CDU-SPD Grand Coalition, which wasn't particularly popular, and they lost a significant fraction of their vote to opposition parties like the Greens, who came second with over 20% of the vote in 2019. Unfortunately, the Greens also performed badly in the recent EU election, seeing their vote share fall to just 12%, which meant that they lost nine seats. And while the FDP won as many seats as they did in 2019, they still won just 5% of the popular vote, behind Sarah Wagenknecht's new BSW party, and barely above the threshold for parliamentary representation in national elections, and way worse than they did in 2021. So collectively, the coalition won less than a third of the popular vote. As many analysts observe, the results have also laid bare the East-West divide in German politics, with the coalition generally performing better in the West, although still getting roundly beaten by the Christian Democrats. But while the Christian Democrats won in every West German state, the AFD won a plurality in the five East German federal states. But while this was clearly an East-West divide, what's perhaps particularly remarkable is how widespread this antipathy towards the coalition was. Not only did the coalition win less than a third of the popular vote, but they also failed to win more than 50% in any one of Germany's 400 local districts. They came closest to a majority in Freiburg, which is a university town that's voted solidly green for the past few elections, but even there they fell short. This is fundamentally because the coalition is just broadly unpopular with basically every demographic group. For instance, while coalition parties, especially the Greens, used to fare particularly well with young voters, exit polling found that the coalition performed poorly in almost every age bracket, although the SPD did fare slightly better with older voters. In this respect, the coalition's decline isn't like the Tories in the UK, for instance, which are losing support in the headline polling, but are still relatively popular with certain demographic groups, like pensioners. Now, these results weren't a total surprise. The three coalition parties have been falling in the polls since at least mid-2022, and more than two-thirds of Germans now say that they're dissatisfied with the coalition. And roughly 70% of Germans now disapprove of Scholz, putting him on a par with Rishi Sunak and making him one of the world's least popular leaders. Now, this is in part because of specific policy failures, like the controversial heat pump law that they passed earlier this year, but it's primarily because of the ideological differences within the coalition. This has both meant that the government's policy platform has felt a bit confused at times, but it's also been the primary cause of the recent political deadlock, because none of the parties are willing to compromise for fear of further upsetting their base and exacerbating their poll decline. 
This is especially true for the neoliberal FDP, who are now resisting any further borrowing, much to the chagrin of the Greens, who came to prominence promising big spending for the energy transition. This all became a particularly acute issue in November, after Germany's highest court ruled that the coalition's original budget, and specifically its use of 40 billion euros of leftover pandemic funding, to be unconstitutional. This means that for the past few months, the coalition has been trying to renegotiate a significantly more austere budget, but things haven't been going well. The FDP have insisted on steep departmental cuts to comply with Germany's debt break, while the SPD and Greens have suggested either loosening the debt break rules or pushing up taxes. However, after the appalling European Parliament elections, the gulf between the FDP and its partners has widened. While the SDP interpreted the results and the AFD's success in Germany's poorer regions as a sign that they need to do more to provide support to poorer voters, the FDP reacts here by suggesting further cuts, this time to Germany's welfare system. So it's currently nearly impossible to imagine the two sides coming to an agreement before July 3rd, which is when Germany's parliament goes off for summer break, and this stasis will only hurt their poll ratings more. Now, so far, despite these appalling numbers, Scholz has been able to avoid snap elections, in part because they're more difficult to trigger in Germany than in other parliamentary systems. But largely because none of the three coalition parties are particularly keen on ditching the coalition and going to the polls right now, given how unpopular they are at the moment. Nonetheless, the coalition is clearly stuck in an electoral doom loop. Bad polling produces more infighting, which produces worse polling, etc. And at some point, one of the parties, most likely the FDP, might decide that they're better off jumping ship rather than continuing down the doom loop. If this doesn't happen on July 3rd, then the next trigger point will come at the regional elections in September. But regardless, it's now looking increasingly likely that the Schultz government won't actually finish its term. A week or so ago, we announced that we're working on a physical magazine which dives deep into the upcoming UK general election. But it turns out that designing a magazine isn't all that easy. So I headed to Skillshare to take a look through some of their design courses, including the incredibly helpful course, How to Design a Magazine and Learn InDesign, which helped me to, well, do both things. This means that unlike when I tried to learn InDesign for another never-released project a few years ago, I was guided through the process quickly and efficiently. And this time, the project will actually see the light of day, thanks to Skillshare's incredibly easy-to-follow guides. It's not just that either. You likely already know that Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, and more. But Skillshare can also help take your career or side hustle to the next level, with hundreds of career-focused classes too. That's courses on everything from how to start a business, to maximizing your workflow, or even how to grow in e-commerce, another course that I used when building the website that sells the magazine. And the best news is that the first 500 people to use the link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today.